how is it going, my friend? Um, in a world of COVID, I guess for me it's okay. So we have so much to talk about. Um, I think you're one of the more fascinating characters in coffee. And you've come and made this huge impression on an industry, but you're actually not somebody who really works in the industry day in and day out. Right. And am I correct that you just retired? Um, four years ago. Has it been that long? Nice. So what were you doing for your day job before you retired? So I worked at National Institute of Standards and Technology, which I wasn't supposed to tell you when I was employed there because I couldn't use my government job to advance my personal interests. But now that I don't work for them, I was a research engineer in the temperature uh, group at the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and I did work for 30 years in humidity measurement and research and pressure measurement. So. So I was a measurement scientist engineer in the measurements that we care about in coffee. That's amazing. So when did you start getting interested in coffee? How does like coffee fit into your life early on? Oh, okay. So um, I think of coffee as being sort of the fusion of science, engineering, art, and drugs. <laughs> that's, that's and so it was a natural, <laughs> well, for me anyway. So I was always kind of, I always kind of liked coffee. And so even when I was younger, I had a Chemex, you know, before there was a third wave or anything like that. And then um, I was out on the West Coast. So I was a sailor for a long time. And my wife and I were boat racers and we were out on the west coast of the u.s doing a series of races and we were being housed by this guy who would feed us cappuccinos in the morning and i was going okay i want to learn how to do that so then i'm like ocd right and i started um looking into it and then i you know it's like a rabbit hole right once you start you're just you're doomed and um yeah, so I got more interested, and then I'd fallen into the um, Alta Coffee News Group, and that was the beginning of the end. I mean, you know. So Alta Coffee that came around a little bit before I got into coffee. I think I came on right as Alta Coffee was fading away, and everybody was migrating over to Home Barista. But what was Alta Coffee like? It seemed like there was a lot of seminal things that really formed where we are today that were happening there. Yeah, so Alta Coffee was before all these forums. It was a news group, so it was all text, right? And you logged in yeah. and it was populated by people like David Schomer and John Blackwell was a regular contributor, you know, and and uh, uh, Barry Jarrett, uh, who was who was a guy, I mean, he was the um, quintessential alt-coffee alt guy. He was a guy who ran a coffee shop in St. Louis, and he had this Brand X espresso machine that we mentioned, but he noticed that it didn't always make the kind of coffee that it made at other times, and he was sort of interested in if temperature might be something that had an effect and so he started putting little you know you can buy these little thermocouple wires from Omega right and just stick them everywhere and he started doing that and he discovered that as he used this machine it got colder and colder and colder and colder and his coffee tasted awful so then he um, presented this stuff to the manufacturer and the manufacturer pretty much sent him packing he says nah this is nothing this doesn't affect anything you know and that you know he got the complete cold shoulder and that was where things were back then but david Schomer had and john blackwell had thrown out this you know thrown down the temperature gauntlet we have this problem how are we going to solve it and i just I was really lucky. I just happened into all dot coffee right at that time. I mean, I had less than six months experience in coffee and started looking at that. So. I mean, and it was probably pretty fortuitous for alt coffee as well to have somebody who studies temperature and pressure for a profession 
joining in at just that moment when they were trying to really understand what temperature meant for brewing. Yeah, so it's funny how different industries have, you know, people beat against the wall on something and the answer lies in, a, you know, it's well known in another one, right? I mean, yeah. It, you know, a chemist, the chemists will all tell you that chemical reactions are temperature dependent, right? And it's really, you know, usually it's an absolute function of, or a function of absolute temperature, uh, excuse me, exponential function of absolute temperature. So as the temperature climbs a little amount when things get hot, the effects are, are, are huge. And so it's no, should be no surprise and the measurement and control of it was was pretty straightforward in the world that I lived in, where we were controlling temperature to a ten thousandth of a degree. The point was that the the algorithms for doing the control, you know, that everybody talks about, PID, were, um, you know, it was common laboratory equipment. You could go buy off the shelf a little box, you know, the ones that we all stuck in the in the old lineas and all the old GB5s and everybody, yeah. you know, put a temperature probe in the boiler and hung a PID off the side of them for a long time. So with that, I mean, there was really sort of a land race at the time of who was going to be the first one to do that and to put the PID controller on the machine, right? So the way it worked yeah. was early February of 2001, right? We're, almost, we're exactly 20 years from when all this was happening. Wow. So early February 2001, and I had suggested on Alt.Coffee, well, the simple solution is to take a laboratory PID controller and control the temperature using a PID controller. And then I was inherently lazy, and I conscripted the parts, but they sat on my bench, and Andy Schechter, who has a company making tofu products, Yes. right? He yep. said, oh, I'll just get one from my business. So he conscripted one, threw it on his machine, and there it was. And he did it like the first couple of days of February 2001. And John Blackwell and David Schomer were doing it at the same time, but they didn't put their stuff up until later in the month. And, um, excuse me, as soon as... Uh, Andy Schechter did it, another guy on Alt.Coffee did it, and then I said, oh geez, I better do it. So I did it a week later. <laughs> and then, uh, Go for it. so we had all done that, and then there was the whole measure, the thing that I contributed was the measurement side, was because I could do that, you know, and, uh, and it was harder for other people. And did you have a measurement device before you started tuning or did you have a measurement device and then start tuning those PIDs? So the original way that the measurements were done was, so David Schomer had done this deal where he drilled a hole through the bottom of the filter basket and he glued in a little, one of those little cheap thermocouple wires I mentioned a few minutes yeah. ago. And then um, he would dose the, filter basket with coffee and he'd like bend the thermocouple programs that was laying on the top and then he'd put it in and he'd brew a coffee and he'd make the measurement and the measurements were really difficult because every time you're brewing a coffee so it was a big mess and it took a long time and also if the thermocouple was touching the coffee, it got one answer. If it was embedded in the coffee, it would get another answer. If it was in the free space above it, it would get the actual measurement of the water coming in. It was difficult. And um, quickly on, I made, a, I made a device that would do the measurement, but use a little needle valve underneath to control the water flow. And that was prone to being plugged up by coffee bits and stuff. But that genesis came, you know, that. Well, Greg, All right. I should let you go. Okay, hey, thank you so much for your time. Sure. I really appreciate it. Well, thanks, and it was fun. It was. Talk to you later. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Please don't talk about me when I'm gone. Oh, honey, though our friendship ceases